Hello and welcome back to Applied Imagery. Today we are talking about Quick Tray Modeler's classification and extraction tool. So let's jump right in and see how it works. Quick Tray Modeler's classification and extraction tool evaluates point cloud models and automatically classifies the points based on your instructions, then exports building roof line and footprint vectors along with building centroids while simultaneously creating a digital terrain model and digital surface model. The resulting classified point cloud can be exported to a new LAS or LAZ file. The digital terrain model can be exported to a GeoTIFF DEM, and the building, roof vectors, and centroids can be exported to a variety of formats including shape, KML, and more. Let's walk through the process. First you will need a point cloud with a minimum point density of one point per square meter. Denser point clouds work better, but less dense point clouds do not provide the point density required to identify buildings and classify them. Similarly, if a point cloud has irregular areas of high and low density, but still averages one point per square meter, it is likely that the buildings will be identified in the high density areas, but not the low density areas. It's important to note the Quick Terrain Modeler will automatically perform a pre-check of data density prior to executing any classification and extraction actions, and it will alert you if your model does not have the required density. However, if you want to verify the density of your model yourself, you can use Quick Terrain Modeler's Grid Statistics tool. Let's take a quick look at the Grid Statistics tool. With your model open, select the Grid Statistics button from the default toolbar. In the window, under Metrics, select the variable Density, then press Calculate Metrics. Once calculated, in the Display Results section, you can see a range of density your model has with minimum and max values along with the histogram showing the point distribution. The model will also be colored according to the chosen color ramp, blue to red in this case. Since the model has a relatively high point density, it will be a good candidate for the classification and extraction tool. One other step that may be useful to perform prior to running the classification and extraction tool is to clean up the point cloud. Cleanup primarily refers to removing points that are obviously noise, for example points far above or below the terrain that are clearly not part of the terrain. Performing cleanup in advance eliminates unnecessary points both not only from calculation but also from consideration during feature classification routines and vector boundary creation. Some useful tools to consider are listed here. Moving on to the classification and extraction functions, from the default toolbar, select the classification and extraction button. In the general section, Quick Terrain Modeler will suggest a grid sampling value. As a guideline, do not set this value below this number. Its primary purpose is to identify ground points in the point cloud as well as to define the grid spacing for the exported digital terrain model. The max object size should be set to the size of the largest object in the scene for consistent classification of that object. A setting that is smaller than the largest object will cause tiling artifacts on larger objects. The classification section allows users to define which point classification values get overwritten. It's helpful to think of the two basic classification categories which are existing and new. Existing classifications are the point classification values that are already attached to the point cloud and there may be benefits to retaining some of those. New classifications are the classification values that Quick Terrain Modeler's algorithm will create and apply and or overwrite to the point cloud. Users will need to decide which classifications to keep and which ones to overwrite based on your desired outcome. The four new classifications using the ASPRS LAS classification values are as shown in green here. To define your desired rules for existing classification values, click the Classification Rules button and designate which existing values to keep and or replace. The default behavior is to replace all classifications. Next, choose which new values to use. Use the checkboxes to choose which new classifications will be overwritten onto the points. Lastly, in the classification section, choose color by class if you would like to see the classification results when the process is complete, or no color change if you would like to retain the current view. Moving on to the vector products section, simply check the box next to any and all products you wish to produce. Building outlines is just the footprint of the building. All building footprints will be contained in the same vector file which will appear in the layer tree named Building Outlines and will initially be read 
but this color can be changed by right clicking on it in the layer tree, selecting edit and set base model color. Building roof vectors attempts to capture the geometry of the roof, different facets, orientations, shapes, and above ground level heights. Also contained in a separate single file in the layer tree called roof vectors and will initially be colored yellow. Building centroids can represent the center of each building in two possible formats. As vectors, which creates a single file in the layer tree vectors folder named building centroids. This file contains all the centroids with the attributes for each one. Name, position, building ID, perimeter, building height, and height above ellipsoid. The other option is as markers, which creates an individual marker at each building centroid. Building footprints, roof vectors, and centroids will not be perfect. However, Quick Terrain Modeler has vector editing capability in the Edit Toolbar. To remove a vector, simply place a selection area, then click Delete Vector. In addition, double clicking on any vector will put the vector in edit mode. In edit mode, the vector nodes will be visible as circles. Simply drag the nodes or right click to delete or add nodes. To clear many markers at a time, use the same process but use the Cut Markers button at the bottom of the edit toolbar. The last section in the window is the surface model products. Quick Terrain Modeler can generate a digital terrain model and a digital surface model if desired. If the digital surface model and terrain model boxes are checked, a DTM and a DSM will appear in the layer tree when the classification and extraction process is complete. The resolution of the resulting DTM and DSM is determined by the grid sampling settings in the settings section. For example, if you choose one meter for the grid sampling, the resulting DTM will be one meter resolution. Once the classification and extraction process is complete, users have several export options for the variety of products. Building outlines and roof vectors can be exported to a variety of formats. In the layer tree, right click on either file, choose export, and select the file format. These exported vector files can be imported into other applications such as Google Earth and ArcGIS. Visualizing roof vectors and building outlines in Google Earth is straightforward. Simply export to KML. Google Earth should automatically open and display the vectors in a 2D wireframe fashion. Double click on Features to display attributes. If you desire to display building roof vectors as solid models in Google Earth, export as a shapefile. Open the shapefile in Google Earth. You will need to right click on the file and set properties. Go to the Altitude tab and specify the altitude to be absolute rather than relative to the ground and click OK. There are many other analyses that can be performed in Quick Terrain Modeler once your model is classified and are covered in other tutorials, but I hope this overview of the classification and extraction tool has given you a better understanding of Quick Terrain Modeler's capabilities. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact us. See you later.